Welcome to Chapter 33 of the Diabetes Canada 2018 Clinical Practice Guidelines. This chapter is entitled Sexual Dysfunction and Hypogonadism in Men with Diabetes. My name is Adam Millar, and my co-authors on this chapter are Richard Bebb and Gerald Brock. The key changes in this section of the guidelines are as follows. Reinforcement of the importance of regular screening for erectile dysfunction in adult men with diabetes. Timing of testosterone measurements, specifically before 11 a.m. And there is a new section on hypogonadism, including a diagnostic workup algorithm. The checklist for erectile dysfunction is as follows. Screen all adult men with diabetes regularly with the sexual function history. Treat erectile dysfunction with PDE5 inhibitors as a first-line therapy as long as there are no contraindications. And investigate for hypogonadism if men with erectile dysfunction do not respond to PDE5 inhibitor therapy. Why do we need to screen for erectile dysfunction? It is known that erectile dysfunction affects 34 to 45 percent of men with diabetes. Furthermore, 40 percent of men over 60 years of age with diabetes have complete erectile dysfunction. In addition to this, erectile dysfunction negatively impacts one's quality of life. Therefore, erectile dysfunction is both common and important. Thus, we should screen all adult men with diabetes regularly as part of a sexual function history. In terms of managing erectile dysfunction in men with diabetes, we start with inquiring about erectile dysfunction on history. Then, we assess if there are any contraindications to PDE5 inhibitor therapy. If there are no contraindications, then one can start on PDE5 inhibitor therapy. If there is no response to this intervention, then one can be assessed for hypogonadism. If the patient is found to have hypogonadism, then they can potentially start testosterone replacement therapy. If they still do not respond after replacement, then they can be referred to an erectile dysfunction specialist. If the patient is found to not have hypogonadism, then they should be referred to an erectile dysfunction specialist. As well, if the patient is found to have contraindications to PDE5 inhibitor therapy, once again, they should be referred to an erectile dysfunction specialist. If we suspect that a man with diabetes has testosterone deficiency state, then we measure the testosterone in the morning, typically between 7 and 11 a.m., or within three hours after waking. At that point, if the testosterone level is normal, then the individual does not require testosterone replacement. However, if the testosterone level returns borderline low or in the low normal range, you can repeat the testosterone level for confirmation. If the testosterone level then returns normal, the individual once again does not require testosterone replacement. However, you may also consider referral to a testosterone deficiency expert if you have strong clinical manifestations and low normal testosterone levels. If the testosterone level is found to be low, then you can pursue a comprehensive laboratory evaluation, which can include FSH, LH, prolactin, sex hormone binding globulin, a calculated free testosterone or calculated bioavailable testosterone, TSH, ferritin or percent iron saturation, a complete blood count, and PSA. If the individual is found to have low testosterone levels, as well as high LH and FSH levels, then they are diagnosed as having primary hypogonadism or a testicular etiology. If the individual is found to have low testosterone levels and either normal LH and FSH levels or low LH and FSH levels, then they are diagnosed as having secondary hypogonadism or a pituitary or hypothalamic etiology. You may also consider treatment or referral to a testosterone deficiency expert if there are clear manifestations of testosterone deficiency, but borderline biochemical levels. The 
recommendations for this chapter are as follows. All adult men with diabetes should be regularly screened for erectile dysfunction with a sexual function history. A PDE5 inhibitor should be offered as first-line therapy to men with diabetes and erectile dysfunction in either an on-demand or daily use dosing regimen. Men with diabetes and erectile dysfunction who do not respond to PDE5 inhibitors should be investigated for hypogonadism with measurement of a morning serum total testosterone level drawn before 11 a.m. Referral to a specialist in erectile dysfunction should be considered for eugonadal men who do not respond to PDE5 inhibitors or for whom the use of PDE5 inhibitors is contraindicated. Men with diabetes and ejaculatory dysfunction who are interested in fertility should be referred to a healthcare professional experienced in the treatment of ejaculatory dysfunction. The key messages regarding sexual dysfunction in men with diabetes are as follows. Erectile dysfunction affects approximately 34 to 45 percent of adult men with diabetes. It has been demonstrated to negatively impact the quality of life among those affected across all age strata and may be an early clinical indication of cardiovascular disease. All adult men with diabetes should be regularly screened for erectile dysfunction with a sexual function history. The current mainstay of therapy for erectile dysfunction is PDE5 inhibitors. They have been shown to have major impacts on erectile function and quality of life, with a low reported side effect profile and should be offered as first-line therapy to men with diabetes wishing treatment for erectile dysfunction. Hypogonadotropic hypogonadism is common in men with type 2 diabetes, with a prevalence of up to 40%. Hypogonadal men with diabetes have a higher risk for cardiovascular mortality than eugonadal men with diabetes. Screening for symptomatic hypogonadism in men with type 2 diabetes is recommended. The key messages for people with diabetes are as follows. Low testosterone is common in men with type 2 diabetes. Symptoms of low testosterone can include diminished interest in sex, erectile dysfunction, reduced lean body mass, and depressed mood and lack of energy. A decrease in sexual function may indicate your risk of cardiovascular disease is increasing. If you are experiencing symptoms of low testosterone, you should talk with your healthcare provider. For further information on these guidelines, you can visit guidelines.diabetes.ca or you can download the app on Google Play or the App Store. For further information on diabetes in general, you can access guidelines.diabetes.ca for healthcare providers. You can call 1-800-BANTING or 226-8464. Or you can access diabetes.ca for people with diabetes. Thank you for your attention.